Wilkins in the pistol, fakes the handoff to Benjamin. Long throw downfield, looking for Darby. Caught for a touchdown. Arizona State takes the lead. ASU looking to finish their drive strong. Here's Wilkins from the shotgun. Finds a man in the middle. That's Kyle Williams. Open touchdown, Devils. They extend their lead for Williams. First touchdown of the year. Manny Wilkins hands the ball off to the right side. Eno Benjamin bounces off a tackle into the end zone. Touchdown, ASU. Hello and welcome to HouseOfSparky.com alongside Scotty Gage. I'm Austin Burnett. Arizona State getting the huge dub against Utah over the weekend, thumping the Utes 38 to 20. And Scotty, it turned into the Nikhil Harry show again. Yeah, he really he was all over the place. Uh, three touchdowns for Nikhil Harry. We're all over the place too. We're going from studio to outside on top of the University Center here in downtown Phoenix. But from Phoenix, let's head over to Tempe to Sun Devil Stadium and let's watch the highlights. The running red hot Utes coming into Tempe to earn their fifth win in a row and flex some muscle too against Nikhil Harry and I guess you could call them the running devils. Let's start with the first drive of the game as Eno Benjamin ran the ball right down Utah's throat and capped things off with this six yard head ringer. ASU has a thing about playing well against top ranked teams in Tempe and Ashari Crosswell wanted to make sure of that. A deep pass intercepted by Crosswell took it to the 47 yard line and it was it was Manny to Nikhil to push the Devils up a deuce and a dozen early in the first quarter, 14-0 ASU, and everything is peachy in the heat. But Moss rots peaches. Apparently Sun Devils too, as he led a 10-play, 75-yard drive to bring the youths back within seven as they went on to score 17 unanswered points. But it was a Manny Wilkins two-minute drill crafted to perfection, which ended with this 23-yard touchdown pass to that number one guy to give the Devils a 21-17 halftime lead. Merlin Robertson and the defense were stout in the third quarter. Merlin, Merlin highlighted it with an INT in the third and kept ASU in the lead 21-20 heading into the fourth. Sparky's feeling good and looking good too. First play of the fourth, Manny to Nikhil across the middle of the field, running down. Huge block by Kyle Williams and it's real deal. Space jam, Nikhil slams the nose of the ball into the Bermuda and it's touchdown Arizona State. 61 yards, 28-20 as ASU would go on to outscore Utah. 17-0 in the final period capped off with this, Eno Benjamin. 44-yard touchdown as he finished the day with 175 yards on the grass and ASU wins it 38 to 20. So there you have it. The Devils are in sole possession of control of the Pac-12 South. And for that reason, we bring in our guy, Mr. Julian Paras, to help break down the insanely amazing win they had against Utah on homecoming. Julian, it seems like what we've seen in Tempe this last week is a whole new squad for Arizona State. That's right, absolutely. And you saw the way that they were able to work out those kinks against the Utah Utes. They really enforced their will defensively. Mm -hmm. And they found out some things on the, offensive, on the offensive end as well. And we're going to be able to go through that with a couple plays. Yeah, so specifically, let's jump into defense. That's Tell me right. what they did that was so good. Yep, all right. Well, with this first play, you see that Tyler Huntley, he is being really pressured, <laughs> to say the least, by the, the by the defense of Arizona State. And you can see they're blitzing up the middle. They're coming up the side. They're, they're forcing him to be able to move out of the pocket and try to find another way to be able to get to his guy. So he moves to the side, throws the bomb down the field. Really good throw, by the way, by Huntley. And you can see his receiver right now is in prime position to be able to get this and even the game Touchdown. in the first. Exactly. But watch what happens next. It pops out of his hands into the palms <laughs> of Ashari Crosswell that starts running it up the, running it up the middle of the field. Uh, right around the 40, 45 yard line right there. And it puts him in prime position. But we're back on the offense with Utah. You can see that the defense lined up right here. The linemen, they're wondering what's going on. They're probably thinking they're going to be able to blitz. But right here, 45 for Utah is wide open, unguarded, no one on him. And that gives him the prime position to be able to get that score. Really, you know, there's not really much to do mm -hmm. about that, but they have to try to figure out what's going on there and know where everyone is on the field at that time. Yeah, so fortunately for the defense, they were able to at least bounce back in the second half, just giving up three points. But the second half was all about the Arizona State offense. They go down 17-14. Manny Wilkins runs a perfect two-minute drill, and then in the second half, they just come out firing. Exactly. What did they do? That was so, so great. Exactly. Well, we're about to go through it, and it includes the likes of Nikhil Harry mm -hmm. and Manny Wilkins. And you you can see in this play, the defensive line is a little confused on what's <laughs> going on. As you can see that Manny Wilkins, he's thrown with ease. And Nikhil Harry, of all oh. people, 
The defenders don't know what's going on. He probably doesn't even know what's going on, but he was ready to catch that <laughs> in the red zone for uh -huh. Arizona State. And you can just imagine the kind of pressure that a player has to be under to be able to catch something like that in his direction and be able to convert on the offensive end. It was an incredible game, and the way that he played was just lights out. Yeah, he really he was he was amazing. I mean, I know those defensive backs, they were they were confused. They, they had the question marks. I had the question marks. I, I was thinking, is Nikhil gonna catch the ball? That's of right. course he did. I'm happy I wasn't one of those guys, didn't have to go up and guard him. But Julian, we appreciate your time, man. ASU seeming, seemingly now on a hot streak as they're heading into the the final few games of the Pac-12 South in control. Now we've talked a lot about Nikhil Harry over the past few weeks, and rightfully so. I mean, the man has nine touchdowns this season, and three of them came on Saturday. But there's a new rising star on this ASU offense, and his name is Eno Benjamin. Doug Haller of The Athletic points out in this tweet that Benjamin ranks fifth in the country in rushing yards and rushing yards per game against some of the nation's toughest defenses. The sophomore running back continues to prove he's legit, as he's rushed for 104 yards and a touchdown against a then top 10 Washington Huskies team. And then he rushed for 175 yards and two scores on Saturday against the Utes, who were ranked 16th in the Associated Press Poll and number three in rushing defense in the entire country. Inu has proved his worth, and if he continues to grow as a running back and dominate against some of the nation's toughest defenses, then this, not even the sky is the limit for Mr. Benjamin. And perhaps the only thing brighter than Eno Benjamin's performance on Saturday was the posters in Sun Devil Stadium, Austin. Pick your poster, my favorite segment. And my, I'm going to go first because, because it comes with a backstory. I'm going into Sun Devil Stadium right down Mill Avenue, and I look across the street and I see a man in a chicken costume. Okay. I don't really know why. Maybe that's just Mill or maybe it's game day. It's 11 in the morning. Whatever. I see a guy in the chicken costume. Of course he has a poster because he knew we were going to do pick your poster. I'd snap a picture of it and it's you are chicken with the Utah U. I don't know if maybe he was trying to call the Utes chickens or maybe he just thought it was funny and that he was a, ch a chicken. Maybe he was calling himself one. I really don't know, but it's hilarious. I mean, seeing a chicken on Mill, does that really surprise <laughs> you though? I don't know. But my pick your poster is going to be, I've only had two hours of sleep. And for any college student having two hours of sleep, it's not Nothing out of the normal. We, uh, we've all gone overnight. We've pulled all like overnighters, and really, that's it's nothing out of the ballpark for that one. Yeah, so. two things on that. Maybe he was a Utah fan. Maybe he was sleeping on the Devils, or perhaps sleeping on the Devils. And another thing is that he made it to the ball game. He's on two hours of sleep, and he's at Sun Devil Stadium. I tip my cap to him. Yeah, absolutely. Now we're gonna tip uh, tip it over to Zach for our segment of Around the Pac-12. Thanks, Austin. Benjamin Franklin said that two things in life are certain: death and taxes. I argue we should have added crazy weekends in Pac-12 football. In Pullman, Cal took on Wazoo in a slugfest. The two were deadlocked at 13-13 until the clock showed under a minute remaining when Gardner Minshew connected with Aesop Winston Jr. in the end zone. Wazoo improves to 8-1 on the season and keeps their college football playoff hopes alive for yet another week. In Tucson, U of A fans got the Khalil Tate they've been waiting for all season, the Heisman contender. It took long enough, but the junior quarterback threw for five touchdowns and 350 yards in the win over Colorado. After their bye week, they'll face Wazoo and Pullman and then ASU and Tucson for the Territorial Cup to close out the regular season. Oregon bested UCLA 42 to 21, but I think we all know the game was over the second Oregon announced those beautiful blackout uniforms for the week. Those things were amazing, those Jordan collabs. The Ducks led the Bruins the entire game in a true team win. Highlights included Uga Chukwu Amadi's 56-yard punt return touchdown, Justin Herbert's 67-yard touchdown pass to Dylan Mitchell, and Tony Brooks James's 54-yard run to the house with five minutes remaining to seal the deal. Oregon reaches bowl eligibility as they move up to 6-3 and three in the year and 3-3 three and three in Pac-12 play. Despite a last-minute rebound from the Cardinals, Stanford fell to Washington. UW earned a number 20 ranking the AP Top 25 poll this week. They'll get a break this week, then take on Oregon State and Wazoo to close out regular season play. And finally, the USC Trojans took on the Oregon State Beavers in Corvallis, winning 38-21 in a game that Aka Cedric Ware made look like two-hand touch on the playground. The senior rushed for three touchdowns and 205 yards. That's it for this week's summary of the Conference of Champions. Back to you, champions, at the desk. Well, surprise, surprise, Nikhil Harry had another great game, scored three touchdowns, and uh, the guy who sits right next to me, he was on the call for that 61-yard touchdown by Nikhil Harry.
Time for the fourth. Wilkins fires it across the middle. That's Nikhil Harry. He's got space. There's a flag on the field. Huge block there by Kyle Williams. Nikhil Harry takes one more guy, dives in the end zone. Is he in? Touchdown, Devils! Nikhil Harry, he is Iron Man. ASU extends their lead. Now 27 to 20. Wow! Braden Bell and Eliab Gabay will be on the call Saturday when the Bruins come to Tempe to take on the Sun Devils. Kickoff is at 12 p.m. Now we go to our pros and cons. I have the cons. Scotty has the pros. I want to start it off with our my first con. You know, Arizona State, they've lost all their games by seven points. And with this big win over Utah, all those seven-point losses, it might come back to bite them when it comes down to the postseason. Yeah, it really will. But for the past two weeks, the reason they have won is because of two guys, Nikhil and Eno. I'm going to call him Nikino. My first pro of the day is Nikino. The past two weeks, they've got nine touchdowns. Utah comes in the number three ranked best uh, rushing defense in the country. They give up 81.1 rush, rush yards per game. Eno throws at them 175 yards. Nikhil Harry and Eno Benjamin, they have been fantastic these past two weeks, giving ASU two Ws. Yeah, I'll give you my second con. And ASU, they just haven't used the tight ends that much. Last game, Tommy Hutt and he had one reception for one yard and I think for ASU going forward and try to win this Pac-12 South division, I think they should try and you know use the tight ends more and there still hasn't been a tight end touchdown this season. Yeah, there's been a lot of touchdowns from, from the other receivers and that's something I want to jump into. Nikhil Harry, yes, Brandon Ayuk had an amazing game and you're starting to look like this team has all the right pieces. You've got a big name uh, head coach of Herm Edwards. You've got a lockdown linebacker in Merlin Robertson. You've got the senior leader in Manny Wilkins and the superstar in Nikhil Harry. This team, they've got the right pieces and they're all gelling well together right now. Yeah, I'm actually going to give you one more pro. A ASU heading into the Utah game. They needed to win two out of their next four. They got one against Utah. They need one more. Now, I know you never look mm -hmm. overlook at a game or anything, but you have to like your chances against the two and seven Utah uh, UCLA team. And for Herm Edwards, things are starting to look better uh, now that they're five and four. Yeah, you win a game against Utah, there's gotta be a little more pros than cons. And the final pro, officially the final pro, is day games. I love day games. Are you kidding me? You go out in the sun in Tempe in Sun Devil Stadium. It's a beautiful November afternoon. You get to play football? Are you kidding me? That's the best pro, but another pro for Arizona State is the fact that they control their own destiny in the Pac-12 South. That's why we're gonna send it over to Joran Palacio to help us break down what that really means. Thanks, Scotty. Let's rewind two weeks. Back then, Arizona State just lost to Stanford, and their opportunity at bowl eligibility looked bleak. And their position in the conference, well, that was better left unsaid. Now with the Sun Devil team, only with three games remaining, they have an opportunity to do the unthinkable. If they win out, they will be in Santa Clara for the Pac-12 championship game. How did this happen? Well, it's thanks in part due to the school down south. However, to put things in perspective, this conference is wide open. In the South, only two games separates the first place team from the last place team. Every single game matters for every single team. So that being said, let's break this week down. Despite the loss last week, Utah still maintains the lead in the conference due to the tiebreaker, and this week they will take on an inconsistent Oregon team at home. Now the Utes and UFC have played in one extra conference game, the Devils, which gives them a leg up in the standings. They close their seasons out with non-conference games, so by the time Arizona State plays the Wildcats, both of their conference records will already be cemented. This week, the Trojans host a Cal team that only lost to Washington State by six. Arizona remains idle this week with a bye, and Colorado, the only team with a win in the South over the Sun Devils, battles Wazoo on the road, and a loss would take them out of the running for this season. Now, Arizona State is the only team in the division that controls their own destiny, but all that could change with a loss to the last place Bruins which would create even more chaos in the conference, by the way. Now, there's just three weeks left, and there's all talks of games moving forward and different scenarios for different teams. But for right now, it's one week at a time. And the advice for Herm Edwards and the rest of the Sun Devils team is easy. Just win, baby. We'll, take it. we'll kick it back now to Scotty. All right, I'm a little utah out, so let's talk some Bruins. Blaine McCormick, come on in here. Let's, let's talk about it. It's a beautiful night, huh? Oh my gosh, Scotty, I feel like Michael Blue Blay. It's a beautiful day and I can't stop myself from smiling. You know what else uh, gets me all cheered up in the morning is watching football. Now let's do that right now against UCLA. Oregon had a pretty good field day with them. I'm going to start with one play for special teams. Look at this punt from UCLA and the formation that Oregon has. We'll pause it right here. There are three defenders on each side of your screen and each duck is assigned to one Bruin to cover in this coverage. Now this leads a wide open hole right up the middle. And what is that punt returner thinking? 
yeah, I'm going to go right up the gut and try to get that touchdown. Now, I point this out because we've seen Nikhil Harry go end around and around the, his defenders, but this is an easy route for Nikhil Harry because he sees the vision right in front of him, gets a few blocks downfield if he can, and into the end zone just like Oregon did on that first play. Now, let's switch over to UCLA's defense. This is deep in the red zone for Oregon. Pretty traditional set. Pistol formation will pause it and resume with the wide receiver going in motion. Now they think that the running back is going off to the right and every Bruin is shifting that way. But that wide receiver is left wide open in the flat, gets a huge block from his tight end. And if I'm Tommy Hudson, the tight end for the Sun Devils, I'm looking at this and really doing my homework. Gets the block, gets the touchdown, gets seven points. And I think Oregon really excelled at this part of the game. And I think Arizona State can do the exact same come Saturday. All right, thanks, Blaine. We appreciate your time, and hey, enjoy the view from up there. Thanks so much, Scotty. Appreciate it, man. Ashari Crosswell is one of the many underclassmen on this ASU defense, and we've seen him come ever so close to intercepting a pass from the opposing quarterback, whether that be tipping the ball or just having the ball go right through his hands. But with 8.35 left to go in the first quarter, the true freshman made a play that he'll remember the rest of his life as Utah quarterback Tyler Huntley launched a deep pass intended for redshirt freshman receiver Jalen Dixon. But Dixon tipped the ball up in the air as he was falling down. Crosswell caught it and returned at 47 yards, setting up Arizona State with great field position as the Sun Devils would score on that drive. Crosswell not only made a miraculous play that helped put ASU in the driver's seat early in the game, but it was his first interception of his young career. And that's why Ashari Crosswell is our feel good story of the week. Now we go to our Pac-12 top plays of the week as JT Daniels hands the ball off to Aka Cedric where he streaks down the sideline to the 30, 20, the rest is history. Caps off a hat trick for Ware in USC's big win. Ware with the speed, but Greg Gaines with the finesse. A tip ball in the air, fully extension for the INT, and that's not even the best part. Take a look, yay! Greg Gaines, the reason he's up there isn't because of the fully extended big man INT, it's because of the celebration. That's pure happiness, Austin. Love to see the lineman get the interception, but this is our Pac-12 top play of the week as Nikhil Harry streaks down the middle of the field and slams it into the end zone for a big ASU touchdown as the Devils defeat Utah in a big win. Well, the Pac-12 top players were great as usual. And pick your posters were on fire too this week. The, the pick your posters were fire. That kid was sleeping two hours a day. Hopefully we can get some sleep after this. It's getting, it's turning to be nighttime, so that's going to wrap up the show here today. So for one more time, for Austin Burnett, I'm Scotty Gaines. For everybody here at the house from downtown Phoenix to Tempe, we'll see you on Saturday, and thanks for joining us.